Hello and welcome to Chart of the Day Cafe for Thursday, July 13th, 2017. Read our disclaimer quickly. Trading stocks is a high level of risk and viewers should complete their own due diligence on any stock or underlying that they intend to own. 100% of the content of this video and communique is intended for journalistic and educational purposes only. This video and all indicators, strategies, and articles herein should not be construed as investment advice. Not making any recommendations always for your further homework. Good morning, Sue here. Hope you've had a good week so far. It's Thursday, so only two more trading days left in the week, and it's turning out to be a rather interesting one, especially for we Canadians, because our central bank, the Bank of Canada, raised interest rates yesterday by a quarter point, but it's the first time in about seven years that they've raised rates, so it had a dramatic effect on our currency, the loonie, moved significantly higher yesterday. So we will see, let's take a look at the charts and see where we're at overall. Um, Chart of the Day Cafe is primarily US based. We, we pretty much uh, focus on US equities, um, but I'm gonna feature a Canadian pick today just because the Canadian market looks to be at an interesting place and I thought it was worthwhile putting forward. So this video might be a little longer than they normally are because I wanna take a look at both the Russell and the TSX. So let's start off with the Russell. Uh, as we always do, we use the Russell as our proxy for the markets overall. If the Russell is moving higher, we are adding names to our watch list. And for that, we use the IWM, which is the ETF that represents the Russell 2000. And we step back to take a bigger picture view of it, so we look at the five-year monthly chart. We've been keeping an eye on this wedge that has been shaping up on the Russell. Keep in mind, these are monthly candles. And so we've noted as of late, we've talked about this in just about every video, that the, the Russell is pretty much trading sideways in this wedge pattern. So each of these uh, monthly candles really didn't have a whole lot of price direction shaping up in the trading candle for the month. We noted the candle for the month of May was red, which caught our attention. Uh, but June cancelled the red candle out with a bullish orientation, and here we are so far for the month of July. Uh, so let's zoom in a little bit to take a look at how price is behaving in this area. We've been talking about, this is the same black line on, so now we're looking at the one year weekly chart. This is the same black line on the weekly chart and the five year monthly chart. We've been talking about this black line up here because it offered resistance uh, here, no, well, back here, here in February, here in April, and we are starting to approach that black line area here after a series of three doji candles on the weekly chart in a row. So this week will be interesting. Uh, if we end up having a bullish candle for the week, uh, the odds, at least in my way of thinking, of us breaking out to the upside of this wedge increase. Um, but if we start to sink in price here, and I think what Janet Yellen might have to say will be um, influential to the market. Uh, if we start to sink, then we might lose this more minor area of support that we talked about on Tuesday. So we're keeping a close eye. So this is the weekly chart. Let's uh, pull it in and take a look at the daily chart. So we put this trend line in on Tuesday and said, interesting area here on the Russell. Will it break out? And sure enough, it did yesterday. Having said that, it sort of lost momentum through the day with a long look at the top. Uh, so I want to see how price reacts today. Do we fill this gap as it gapped out of our wedge and move higher or lower? I'll be paying particular attention. But at Chart of the Day Cafe, we use this blue line, which is the eight-day EMA, as our guide. When price on the Russell is trading up and over the blue line, we are adding names to our watch list. So I am going to add a new, a new name to our watch list this morning. It's one I've been watching for a while. It's a Canadian pet, dual listed. Um, so we'll, let's go take a look at that. And that new name we're adding to our watch list this morning is Encana Corporation. Encana is dual listed on both the US and Toronto exchanges. Ticker symbol ECA on the New York and Toronto exchanges. We are going to look at the chart on the US side. Before I get into the chart though, let me tell you a little bit more about the company. Encana engages in the exploration, production, and marketing of natural gas, crude oil, and natural gas liquids. They are a big player in Canada. 
You know what chart of the day cafe it is all about value first and growth second and Encana has an excellent value score. Current forecasted earnings growth rate is 32 percent. Again that's a nice healthy number. It's got a current PE of 20.33 and a current dividend yield of 0.66 percent. So with that let's get into the chart. We're looking at the two-year weekly chart you can see on the two-year, it's in an uptrend and sitting in an area that may offer some support. So this orange line uh, indicates my area of support, and it's just an area. It's not a defined line. But I like the way Encana consolidated here for a number of weeks and then had that lift up and over. It's come down to retest that area of support. It has is having a nice week so far. Um, so I like it in this area, and I'm going to get into um, this area right here on the daily chart. But I just wanted you to see overall uptrend and at an area that may offer possible support, emphasis on possible. Let's move it away from the two-year weekly to the six-month daily. Here's that same orange line and the convergence of our uptrending trend line. Um, I like the way it had a double touch here of our trend line and lifted yesterday with increasing volume. Having said that, it wasn't a strong conviction day in terms of the way the candle shaped up. But for me, I like to see price up and over our blue eight-day EMA. When it trades below, not interested. When it trades above, interested. So it currently has, I use a three and an eight EMA cross. It currently has that cross. So I'm keeping an eye on Uncanny here. And I would actually even sharpen the area of support further. I know everyone has their own way of doing things. I'm not suggesting you do it this way, but I will be looking for in Canada hold this line here. So our risk reward on this is pretty tight uh, in this area. So liking in Canada here in this area, and we'll be looking for a strong candle con to continue the strength of this price action. Along with our new watch list pick, we always like to take a look at the sector that it's in. And for that, we're going over to XOP, which is the Oil and Gas Exploration and Production ETF. We're looking at the two-year weekly chart. You can see on the two-year weekly that it's in an overall uptrend, perhaps. shouldn't say uptrend yet, because it needs to lift off of this area here. But this area was important here and here. So I will be looking for some lift off of our black trend line and this horizontal orange line of support. We will see, no guarantee we get it, but I like the way this chart is looking. I'm going to move it away from the weekly to the six month daily, just like in Canada. It's been kind of bouncing around this floor. We'll see if we get some follow through. It's all about price staying up and over that blue eight day EMA. So in the next couple of days, I want to see some positive candles and price action lifting us off of this area. We will see. Because Encana is a Canadian company, let's go take a look at the TSX overall. So for that, I'm going to go back to our two-year weekly chart. What I want you to note, we're looking at the TSX weekly, we're at a possible area of support here on the TSX as well. So I like the way it consolidated here for a number of weeks, broke through, and now sitting at that area that may offer some support and lift. We will see. I'm going to move it away from the two-year weekly to the daily chart. Ironically, yesterday when the uh, Central Bank of Canada raised interest rates, the TSX uh, closed marginally in the red. So this is a candle that is a little concerning. For me, I would want to see some positive follow-through here and a bullish candle either today or tomorrow lifting us off of this area and showing us some conviction to the Canadian markets. So I will be watching the TSX in this area pretty carefully. Along with that, we also like to take a look at um, seasonality. For that, I go to equityclock.com. Love this site, really think it's terrific. I use it all the time. Uh, you note that this is the seasonal chart for Encana. Back half of the year, it trades in a somewhat sideways pattern. Uh, so seasonality may or may not be there. This is a data point I always like to refer to. Um, no guarantee that happens this year, but I always, always think it's interesting to note. 
Also, I've noticed some insider buying at Encana lately. Not a ton in terms of dollar value, but always nice to see. And analyst support. So for that, I always go over to Finviz to see if analysts are favoring my watch list pick. And you can see that Raymond James recently um, upgraded Encana from outperform to strong buy. Um, it's a little mixed, but for the most part, the analyst support is positive for Encana. Also, a number of really great articles. The one that I'm going to include is a Motley Fool article, two stocks to avoid and one to buy, and guess which is the one to buy? It's in Canada. This was dated back in April, but um, it's insightful in terms of um, where the cost of energy needs to be for them to be profitable, so I'm going to include this with my video today. also wanted to give you the heads up on two past Chart of the Day Cafe picks that I think look interesting here. The first one is Apple. We're looking at the five-year weekly chart. Apple was one of our first picks back in 2014. We put our video, we're looking at the weekly chart by the way, we put our video out here, the green circle, that had a beautiful run from there. We reiterated Apple again here, green circle, in uh, 2015. It had a little bit of lift from there. Mentioned it again here at this area of support, green circle. It's had a beautiful run since then and it's looking to be sitting at an area of support here. I'm going to move it away from the five-year weekly to the six-month daily. You can see Apple looks like it may want to lift here as well. It's all about price staying up and over that blue eight-day EMA, at least for me. Um, check the scores on Apple this morning. The value score is still high. The forecasted earnings growth rate going forward is not, it's 4%, which is positive, not terrific, but I know a lot of people like Apple, and it's got a current dividend yield of 1.73, so the value and growth is still there. Keep an eye on it if you like Apple. The other one I wanted to mention is ABBV. Um, love this company. We mentioned it was our chart of the day cafe pick. Now we're looking at the week, or sorry, the daily chart uh, on April 20th. Back here, it's had a beautiful run since then and consolidated for a while, had some nice positive lift yesterday. Really like this company, keeping an eye on this one here as well. Price is up and over our blue, which we look for. And the uh, value score on this one is really excellent. Today I checked these scores. Uh, forecasted earnings growth rate going forward, 16% positive. It's got a dividend yield of 3.56%. And it looks as though earnings are on July 28th. So heads up on these two. I think they both look pretty good here as well. And so to summarize, let's go back and check our boxes. We started today's video with a look at the Russell Index. And we noted that on the five-year monthly chart, the Russell Index is trading in a wedge pattern, sort of a sideways uh, price direction, looking for a trend. Having said that, price broke out of our little mini wedge yesterday and is currently trading up and over the 8-day EMA on the daily chart. We looked at the TSX. We noted that on the 2-year weekly chart, the TSX is at an area of possible support. We looked at XOP, which is the ETF for the oil and gas exploration space, and we noted that it is at an area of possible support on the 2-year chart. And similarly with Encana, it is at an area of possible support on the two-year chart. I've got these two highlighted because they are absolute must for me at Chart of the Day Cafe. Encana has an excellent value score. Sometimes I say good, sometimes I say great. Encana's is excellent. It's got an excellent growth score with a forecasted earnings growth rate going forward of 32%. It's got a current dividend yield of 0.66%. It currently does have that 3 and 8 EMA daily cross that I personally look for, so I've checked that box. Seasonality, it's trading in a somewhat sideways pattern on the seasonal chart, so I'm not going to check that. I'll leave that up to you. It's got analyst support. We noted that Raymond James recently um, upgraded it from outperform to strong buy. And we noted the insider buying, so we've got that box checked. Current PE of 20.33, and it looks as though earnings are on July 21st. As a reminder, I wanted to say these videos go out every Tuesday and Thursday morning prior to 9.30 a.m. If you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel by hitting the red subscribe button on our YouTube homepage. That way you get the videos as soon as they are released.
With that, I'll leave you. Have a great weekend, and thanks for watching.